Hello again from AM Builds. Here we have a video detailing how I made the linear actuator legs for my bench. Please watch the overall bench video if you haven't already to see them in the finished bench. With my shop being so small for my large bench, it has to be mobile to enable me to optimise its position for the task in hand, and an electrical lift rather than struggling underneath with a mechanical device has meant I use the feature most days, and often several times in a session. The caster I chose is in the description below. It is a simple non-braked caster and has a load capacity of 180 kilograms or 400 pounds and a swivel sweep of 160 millimeters diameter. This determines the inside size of the leg as the caster must be able to sweep freely as the bench is moved. I then sourced 18 millimeter fixed casters from a well-known auction site. I needed 256 so negotiated a good discount. Annoyingly I ended up with two slightly different models as there was not enough of either in stock and I had to make a 1mm height adjustment for the black ones to make it work. Here are some of them ready to be used. It was then time to assemble lots of plywood offcuts and make 28 core pieces and 16 spacers as per the picture. It represented a clear out of offcuts from several projects and so I sorted them to take account of variations in thickness to equalise the piles. I then cut the 16 spacers for the sides. I wanted to glue and screw the pieces together for maximum stability and ease of assembly but I also wanted to avoid any screw clashes and so I marked out and drilled the holes as you can see to stagger the screws. Working against a perpendicular board screwed to my old bench, I built up each leg, being careful to keep them square, pre-clamping as I progressed. So here's the start of the process with the side board two and a bit times the 18mm ply. Plenty of glue, but spread out reasonably evenly. The second piece is put on with 30 by 5 mm screws. You notice that an additional countersinking was done there when one of the holes wasn't good enough. This is level 3. With this one we used 50 by 5 mm screws. All subsequent layers were done with 60 by 5 mm screws. We're raising the board again by 2.5 times the thickness of the plywood or thereabouts. Number 4. And number five, try and have everything that you need within hand's reach. You'll see that I'm not moving at all from my working position. The penultimate board. And time to raise the perpendicular backboard, another two, two and a bit pieces of plywood. And that's the main seven sections put together. Time to put on the spacers. Using a little fillet of plywood 30 millimeters wide, that gives the correct spacing. That's one done. Same again for position two. Same again for position three. But for position four, you need a 48 millimeter spacer so that the centre is put in the right place. And time for a wipe with a wet cloth. Here is a complete leg, not perfect but I hoped good enough. Four casters were screwed to each shoulder top and bottom, meaning 64 per leg. Here are the inner legs finished with external corners marked A and B for one set of legs and C and D for the other. The main casters are fixed with coach bolts, checking that the swing of the caster is within the wooden part of the leg, the small casters providing some extra clearance between the wooden component and the outer leg. 
The request went to my blacksmith friend to fabricate brackets to allow the mounting of the actuators. The use of clever spins means they can be removed for service or replacement should the need arise. Here is the specification label from my actuators. They require 12 volt DC to operate, have a 50 mm travel and are rated at 6000 newtons which is around 600 kilograms or 1320 pounds. So they would greatly exceed any load I could envisage. If you are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing and checking out some of our other videos. My dad and I put a lot of effort into the production of these videos and would greatly appreciate your support. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the video. The bench is designed like a traditional cart with essentially two axles, each consisting of two legs and a small middle cupboard and a chassis made from a torsion box. The next thing was to make the subunits for the paired legs. This consisted of an almost square column for each leg and a central cupboard unit which would be populated with clamp holders later in the build. Although a modest space, the clamp area is easily accessible and had that space been lost to the internal bench volume, it would have been largely wasted. I appreciate that this could well be over-specified, but I didn't want the bench to fail at any time, and also I wanted to make it in a way that could be disassembled into units in the future if I needed to move it. Measurements were taken to establish the internal size of the legs, and each unit is made from 18mm plywood, glued and joined with 8 by 40 mm dominoes. The legs are formed from a four-sided tube, and with the number of pieces required I took stock of my offcuts pile and made most of them for the first end. My bench front and back were to be covered by a portion of a long sheet with a central cutout and so there was an opportunity to harvest approximate offcuts from the two sheets and this saved me cutting into an additional full sheet. The legs were marked A, B, C and D and the corners for each marked 1 to 4 dominoed and dry fitted. A cutout to allow the actuator to be in position then had to be made and I used a hole saw and jigsaw to make the carved slot. I had allowed enough clearance to insert rectangles of laminate on the inside of the columns which would provide a durable low friction rolling surface. I marked approximately where the laminate would be needed, cut it with my track saw on a piece of scrap sheet and glued it with contact adhesive using a spare caster on a scrap of wood as an improvised roller to optimise the glue bond. Time for a glue up. The tops of the legs were cut oversized from three pieces of 18mm ply, glued and screwed and firstly tied it up on the table saw and then marked with the leg letter and the outside corner. The table saw was used again to shave the squares down to achieve a tight push fit. The actuator assemblies were dry fitted to make sure everything was working and sliding properly when a battery was connected. The parts for the middle cupboard were cut, dominoed, dry tested and glued. I now had the three elements for one end. Allowing a 1mm packer between the units in case I needed some wriggle room to keep it square, I cut a back panel to this I would attach the support for the chassis and fix it to the two leg sleeves and clamp cupboard. I drilled pilots for the coach bolts that would, with glue, hold the chassis bracket on and then assembled the parts. Two bolt heads on either side would impinge whilst fixing the legs and so I routed out clearance on the legs. The three parts ready to glue and screw to the back plate. Turned over, I now made the bench end piece with a little extra material at the sides and centre so that I could use a flush cut bit in my fest tool followed by the round over bit in my Black & Decker to give the best cosmetic result. That's it made ready for the next stage of assembly and this shows the raised and down positions. There is another layer of 18mm ply to go on the front and back of the bench and this completes the two layers on all four sides of the legs. The finished legs showing the movement. I hope you found this video had enough detail to make sense to you and was of interest. 
Please help my channel by liking and subscribing so we can bring you more content. And if you don't mind, please click the notification bell for the next one. I'm happy to answer any questions to the best of my ability. And once again, thanks go to my son Malcolm who edits and produces the channel. See you soon. Goodbye.